500. It's your boy, J- Jimmy. 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 Now what's worth doing is worth doing for money. Straight from y'all street to Wall Street. <laughs> Anybody tells you money's the root of all evil? It doesn't. Make yeah. up. Make yeah. Dudes wake up. Hope the girl turned on. Stay in. Get a little bit. Get a little bit. Only woman in the morning. I want to turn on this. Check it quick. Why the average man looking at this? It's sad life. She fine as it. I'm over here looking at tails and whips like yeah, five, six. <laughs> I left the mayhem for the market. Now nah, I don't want a dope spot. I want to stop it. I know that booty got dry. Triggered my stop losses. But I ain't got time for your wop. My V-Wops cross. Rich with hot V's and pushing hot key. Strategy and plans to make grand. Still in my wife beater. Batman pajamas. House slides. Had about five hot picks for the day. Cause I like the way the dial bounces. Four hot dips on call. So I got options. Two with a lot of volume. One with a double bottle. Now I know dumb money don't understand. Am I talking about my trade? Or just thinking with my Mac D? You see, we different in the way we move. You move with kittens and your dog. I move with bears and bulls. I got a green thought. I grow with the marijuana. Waking up with the fun. Oh, some commas. Jump out of bed, make profits. Eat my bacon and egg, make profits. Light up, watching them candles, profits. While I'm still in my sand, making profits. They used to watch me move them pets and die. Now I watch moves in the NASDAQ profits. Used to run from the ATF and them cops. Now I run down ETL, making profits. I jump out of bed. Make profits, eat my bacon and egg. Make profits, light up watching them candles. Profits, while I'm still in my sand. Making profits. Yeah. Yeah. See me and Jim Cramer been talking mad money. He said today I'm taking a risk. They got the feds coming, but I got support here with. I call a short squeeze. You get the drop, she pull the trick and abort these. If she stay on my watch list, I might have to wife her. But I know better. I'm a true trading group of life. I call up the Wolf of Weed Street. It's time to flip some profits. Go ahead, be hawking. Up for them. Get your spot here. I'll double top that. Then the head and shoulders. Hit him up with this resistance. Watch him roll over. Cause I see John Wicks in contract. If I say I make a million a day, well, that's a large cap. You moving out, that's why you get crossed Get split, get delisted, and knocked off And I'm setting the whole block off I'm buying gang stock and selling them Roblox off I jump out of bed, make profits Eat my bacon and egg, make profits Light up, watching them candles, profits While I'm still in my sand, making profits They used to watch me move them packs Now I watch moves in the NASDAQ profits Used to run from the ATF and them cops Now I run down ET hey, my and my family profits. Hey, go, what we doing, my man? Hey, make profits Hey, Shug, Mike, what we doing, dog? Hey, make profits Yo, Wolf, Professor, what we doing? Hey yo, what's up everyone? Welcome to the True Training Group live stream. Happy Friday. Hope you all had a fantastic week. My name is Michael Edward Paranati. I go by Michael Edward and I'm the co-founder and head trader of True Trading Group. In case you didn't know, we are a Benzinga FinTech Awards finalist for the best data analysis tool in 2023. And we are also the fastest growing and highest rated premium online education platform that combines university level trading and investing courses with premium stock market tools, live workshops, individual mentorship and coaching for stocks, options, crypto and futures. We day trade, we swing trade. We also cover long term investing. There's literally something for everybody here in True Trading Group. We take that university level of curriculum, we pair it up with eight professional trading moderators that are with you from pre-market all the way through into the close. You're not gone after an hour or two and you'll have to fend for yourself. The moderators are with you each and every single day for the entire day, calling out their trades, answering questions, providing market commentary and analysis each and every single day. You also get access to our members, the most educated, helpful, supportive and successful community of traders that you will ever find. Not to mention the real-time trade alerts, from the moderators and myself that collectively as a group have been able to maintain a cumulative win rate on all of our executions of just around 80 percent now going on roughly the last four years now if you're wondering why you should listen to anything it is that we discuss on this channel it's because i did not figure this stuff out on my own i began my career working at t3 alpha fund in new york city my first job out of college where they had me go through a training program before i was ever able to touch one dollar of the fund's money then 2008 happened, and that was the Great Recession, the stock market crash. It was also the same year I received one of the firm's Trader of the Year awards. Now, you fast forward, and I'm the co-founder and head trader of TTG, along with my team of eight professional full-time trading moderators and an over 30-person staff. We've helped thousands of members from all over the world reach their goals. We actually have members in 115 different countries, truly a global community here at True Trading Group. So if you're ready to learn, trade, and profit for real, you've come to the right place. Six nights a week, Sunday through Friday, we go live on this channel with myself, 
other TTG mods and special guests. We'll drop golden nuggets to give you free lessons, education, and trade ideas that can help you guys all become better traders. So if you've not yet done so, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications so I don't miss out, guys, on these streams. Speaking of not missing out on these streams, <clears throat> set your reminders now because Sunday, Sunday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern, we're going to be going live. And I'm going to share with you guys some of my top trade ideas for the week. We've just put in new all-time highs in the markets yesterday. And with the way that this market has been trading, you're beginning to get some people on like, I was just watching CNBC. It was a quiet day in the markets today. It really wasn't a very volatile today. The markets were basically flat right until the final moments of the day. And you got a quick little pullback right into the close. But for the most part, it was a quiet day in the overall markets and over indexes. And I don't know why, but there was a couple of people on CNBC today. And that all they were talking about was, is there a correction coming? Is there a correction coming? Is there a correction coming? It was like the, the topic of the day. Um, and you know, I am shocked that we actually got to 524 this early in the year. I am. I, if you asked me in November of last year that the SPY is going to be at 524 uh, highs by March, I would have said no. It's definitely not the price action that I had initially anticipated that we were going to see to start this year off. But here's my... Here's the thing that I keep kind of going back and forth with when people are talking about there's going to be a correction, there's going to be a correction. Well, for, um, you know, I, I think that, oh, we got, oh, what's up, kiddos? Nice. Kiddos, nice. Very nice. We'll make sure something, kiddos, if you, if you want, um, since you were a trial member, kiddos, just send us a text message. Because kiddos, if you do want to join with the 50% discount, um, you just have to send us a text message. All right. So kiddos, you can just text us 1-888-306-8783 so that we can give you the discounted price. Otherwise, if you just joined through the trial, you, you would spend more money. The membership would cost you more if you were to just go on your, uh, your dashboard and then upgrade. So instead of doing that, text us and we'll give you the 50% the discount code that I offer on the YouTube channel. All right, so give us a text message, kiddo, 1-888-306-8783. So here's the thing that we talk about. A correction, by definition, is a 10% pullback. Um, in order for us to get a 10% pullback, you're talking about, you know, that, that's a pretty, pretty significant pullback. Here's my issue. My issue with that is, there's $6 trillion in cash on the sideline. That's actually a record high. That's a lot of money. That is a lot of money. And we know for a fact, based on positioning, that 2023, the majority of institutions and funds missed the tech rally, that they were not as invested as they would have liked to have been. They were, they had hedges on, they had, you know, larger than normal amounts of cash. They were not fully invested to capitalize on that November, December, January, February, now into March rally. So there's been a lot of underperformance going back from last year and then coming into this year. With $6 trillion on the sideline, I have to imagine that the moment that markets actually do pull back, I got to imagine that some of that money is going to get put to work. And, you know, one of the things that I was thinking about over the last couple of days from the, the stance of like a bigger picture was, yeah, this is an incredible rally, right? It really is one of the, one of the best rallies and one of the strongest rallies and most impressive rallies that I've seen in my entire career. You know, you're talking about four and a half months of just upside without any real pullback. You know, you've never had really more than a two, than a one and a half to 2% pullback during this entire rally. And the market's up, you know, 28%, um, 
you know, 28% in a matter of four and a half months, which is just ridiculous because the average yearly return is between nine and 11%. If you go back the last hundred years. So to get 28% in four and a half months is so insane. And it's not even just that matter that it's insane. 28% without experiencing even a 3% pullback, a four or 5% pullback. That's insane. So I understand why people are talking, starting to talk about now, like, hey, is the rally overdone? Um, you know, is there going to be a pullback? Is there going to be a correction? And I do believe that we are going to get um, a pullback. And I, I believe that pullback will take you back underneath 500. When does that pullback actually start? I don't, I'm not here to predict the future and tell you guys what the weather is going to be like two weeks from now. Um, but I think that when you actually do get a sustained pullback, maybe that pullback lasts like two weeks. I think that it's going to get bought. I think that some of that six trillion dollars that's on the sideline, I think it's going to come into the markets as long as, as long as the economic data stays where it is, and, and maybe this pullback can come as you get into your next earnings season, because earnings season is coming up, right? Earnings season is going to be coming up, and maybe you start to get some warnings on the consumer because you had some warnings on the consumer today. You had Lululemon and Nike. Both report earnings yesterday. Both of those stocks issued concerns and weak guidance. And they got their heads taken off. Lululemon down 16% today. Nike down 7% today. So these are some of the most well-known, highest in demand brands that there really are that have very loyal customer bases telling you that they have concerns about um, telling you that they have, they have, you know, worries about the next quarter and worries about, you know, the consumer demand and consumer spending habits. Is that just something that's isolated between Nike and Lululemon and that, that segment of the market, or are you going to start to see some of the other companies that are, you know, retail related whether it's clothing or services or some other type of product that also has some concerns about, you know, spending patterns that they're seeing from their consumer base. I don't know. I don't know. I think it's certainly possible. I think that, you know, a lot of people are getting to a little bit of a, of a fed up kind of breaking point with, with the price of things and the higher prices were, were being absorbed a lot easier you know, a year ago, but when prices are as high as they've been for such an extended period of time, it eventually starts to work itself through household budgets and household budgets begin to change as, you know, I don't know, you know, like, um, like car insurance, car insurance, if you've renewed your policy lately, even without having a single accident or, or a single ticket on your record, your, your, your car insurance probably jumped 50, 60, 70 bucks a month somewhere in that in that range and then forget about if you've had any infractions on your license and forget about it your your insurance is probably you know really jumped it's just one tiny little example of how like you know prices are starting to catch up to people and i think it's very possible that you could see a slowdown in the consumer over the next couple of months you could get some warning signs from some companies about warning about guidance going forward and that could give you a pullback in the markets but that pullback in the markets i think is going to be not a worrisome pullback i think it's going to be a very much needed and healthy pullback that's what i think and i think as soon as that pullback happens i think some of that six trillion dollars that's been on the sidelines this entire time is going to find its way into the market so I don't know if you're going to get a full 10% correction. Um, could we go down five, six, seven percent? Sure. But do we actually get into correction territory? I think some some bigger things would have to happen for us to get into correction territory. I think you would need to see the labor market weakening. I think you would need to see, you know, the unemployment rate higher than expected. I think you would start to, you would need to start to see jobless claims numbers higher than expected. I think those data points would have to change now. And I say change because for the last several weeks and the last couple of months, those numbers have been absolutely fine. Uh, unemployment um, has been low. Jobless claims have been low. Um, yes, there's been a lot of revisions with the amount of jobs that were added. Um, 
kind of makes you scratch your head a little bit when you initially say that the month of January, there was 358,000 new jobs. And you're like, actually, it was only 228,000. How are you off? How are you off by <laughs> by that many? But how are you off by 130,000 jobs? Um, you know, but you, you are getting these large revisions, but so that, you know, maybe new jobs weren't added, but it's starting to balance itself back out. And your jobless claims numbers have been very good. Jobless claims numbers, literally for the last two consecutive weeks in a row, they were under what was expected. Initial claims and continuous claims, they were both under what was expected. And typically the, the, the data point that you start to look at when you start to feel like, hey, the labor market starting to weaken is when that continuing jobless claims number begins to rise. And when, because the continuing jobless claims number is really an indication of the labor market. It's one thing for, for like companies to lay people off to cut, to, you know, cut back on costs. But if those people that get laid off can very quickly find another job, it actually tells you that the labor market is still in a very good position. The, where the labor market will start to become weak is if the people that get laid off cannot easily find another job. And you'll see that in the continuing jobless claims, not even necessarily the initial jobless claims. That's the early indications of a weakening labor market. We haven't seen it. And it's not like you get that data every month, like you do the, the US labor report, which is how many new jobs are added and what's the new unemployment rate. The jobless claims number you get every single Thursday. So, I mean, that's very frequent data that people can look at and people can point to. And aside from like one random week here and there, the overwhelming trend of those jobless claims numbers have been to the downside. You know, you're talking, there was a couple uh, weeks where the jobless claims were less than 200,000. Just this last week, it was like 204, 205,000, which is a very, very, very low number. It's really once that number gets up to like 300,000 is when you're like, okay, that's when, you know, those numbers start to become worrisome, but they've been lower than expected. Um, they've been trending to the downside. And I think you would need to see that data change in order for you to actually get a 10% pullback. Um, so I think that over the course of the next couple months, I think there will be a pullback opportunity in this market. I think that, that pullback opportunity is going to be fueled by a combination of earnings weak earnings guidance as retail starts to show a little bit of a concern over consumer spending habits. And I think that that will then be coupled with maybe you start to actually see a little bit of weakening in the labor market, nothing major, but a little bit of weakening in the labor market. And I think those two things combined can give you a pullback. I don't think that gives you a crash. I don't that, don't think that that gives you a recession. I think it gives a buying opportunity for the $6 trillion that are on the sideline, which is why I don't think that that pullback is going to be that deep. I don't think you're going to get like this, like 15 to 20%, you know, move to the downside and all of a sudden this 20% drop and now we're back to a bear market. I don't think that that's going to be the case unless the labor market really weakens. But as of right now, that is not the case. And you'll see that data coming. Um, and I just, I haven't seen it at all in any of the jobs claims numbers or any of the labor market numbers that we get. So I want to just kind of talk about that a little bit because, you know, and I want you to remember this conversation when that moment comes and when you actually do get a pullback, because there's so many people that have been sitting on the sidelines this entire time and just people that message me on Twitter or, or message us on Facebook, or they send us emails to true trading group, whatever it is. But a lot of these, a lot of people have not participated in this move to the upside. A lot of people have missed out on the NVIDIAs, the Broadcoms, the AMDs, the Microsofts, the Metas, the crowd strikes of the world. A lot of people have missed out on those, on those stocks. So when you actually finally do get a pullback, you really need to take advantage of it. The problem that happens with a lot of uh, investors at retail investors is that they, they want to, they want to buy everything when it's going up. And then as soon as you get the pullback, they go, Oh no, here's the crash. And then they don't actually do anything. And you can't let that opportunity happen. You can't let that opportunity come and go. You, you've really got to be able to kind of say to yourself, okay, 
as the market's now at 520 and you're asking me, should I buy NVIDIA at $940? You know, then if NVIDIA goes down to, let's say, 700 and you're asking me, should you buy it at 940? Because do I think it's going to 1200? Then if NVIDIA was to go to like 750, then you can't be scared to buy it at 750 if you are willing to buy it at 940. And, and that's, and you can't be looking at the spy and say, you know, should I buy at 520, but then you're not willing to buy at 480. Now I do think that 480 is a, in the four eighties is a, an area that we are going to see. I, I do believe that this area is going to be, is going to be reached and is going to be tested at some point this year. I still do feel that way. And that is your prior all-time highs. So when we broke out of these prior all-time highs, here they are, right? There's your prior all-time highs. You broke through that and have rallied. I think that you are going to get at least some type of a back test and a pullback back into this zone. And then I think that that area right there, that's where I think a lot of that $6 trillion that's on the sideline is where I think it's going to start to find its way into the market. That area. And I'm thinking maybe over the next couple of months. I'm not saying that this is going to happen right now. It's not going to happen next week. It's not what I'm saying. But I do think that we are getting to a point where we're getting awfully close from a price action standpoint of getting to some overbought levels on a lot of different technical indicators and a lot of different sentiment reads where the markets have run a little bit too hot. We don't go up, you know, nothing goes up in straight lines. A pullback is normal. A pullback is healthy. A pullback is needed in order for us to make another leg higher. I do believe that a pullback is coming. I think you could see us go back down under 500. And I think that the pullback will be fueled by earnings, lower, gu lower guidance on earnings, something similar to what you saw with Lululemon, something similar to what you saw with Nike. And I think that that coupled with maybe if you start to see some weakening in the labor market, that gives you the pullback and then the $6 trillion comes in because they still believe that the soft landing is the most probable scenario. That's what I think. So for people that don't have anything, like if you're someone that didn't get anything into the markets in 2022 or 2023, if you don't have any of these stocks, if and when you actually do finally get a multi-week pullback, I'm not talking about one or two days. I'm talking about a multi-week pullback. Okay. I'm talking about price action before I take a sip of water. I'm talking about price action that looks something like this, right? Or this or this, right? Or this. Okay. That is, this is the, that, that these are pullbacks, right? I'm not talking about like one or two red days. I'm talking about where like, okay, we're red on this week. And then, you know, another week you're red on that week and you get these two, you know, you, you at least get, this is a weekly chart now on the spy, right? This is a weekly chart, right? So there's three weeks red, right? Four weeks red, two weeks red, right? Like here's, See multi-weeks, multi-week pullbacks, right? Not just a day or two days. And when that actually does happen, you will most likely start to hear people on the news. You'll most likely start to hear people on social media that have been eating crap this entire move higher that have been telling you that we're, we're effed and this is a bubble and it's going to end terribly. Those people that have been very quiet over the last couple of months while this market's rallied, they're going to get very loud again. They're going to get very loud again. And I'm telling you that they're going to get very loud again so that you don't allow that to influence your decisions. If you want to buy NVIDIA, if you're considering buying NVIDIA at 940, then you better be willing to buy it at 750. If you're considering putting money into the SPY at 520, then you better be willing to put it in at 45. All right. So those are my thoughts. When it comes to kind of the, I mean, this is much more bigger picture stuff and not anything that is even related to like, hey, something I'm going to do about this next week. Um, what I will tell you is to set your reminders for Sunday evening at 8.30 p.m. Eastern because at 8.30 p.m. Eastern on Sunday, I am going to be going live um, and I'll be going over with you guys some of my top trade ideas for the week. Um, I'm going to go over some top, top trade ideas for the week and exactly what stocks that I am focused on. I'll give you guys just a couple of, you know, quick little, um, quick little, you know, some charts that I've, I've looked at here that I'm, I'm kind of keeping an eye on for next week. I'll do some more analysis. One of them is CrowdStrike. And I kind of like this bottoming, this little candle that we put in here. 
on the daily chart today. And I kind of, I'm going to be looking at possibly crowd strike for a long um, to get back up towards the high three thirties uh, Monday, Tuesday. So I'm looking for something that's going to look like that on crowd strike. This is just one of the ideas that I kind of have in my back pocket. Um, I also think that we can keep a, a look here on Microsoft if the market moves higher. And this is really only if the market moves higher, will I then try to look for, you know, Microsoft to give me some type of a day like this. But what I want to be cautious of, and I feel like you have this, you, you have a risk of, of a failed, of a failed move here where you kind of gapped up and you have, you, you have the risk of like doing something like this um, come Monday. And I just want to be cautious of this. And I want to be mindful of this. If we start to see that you want to be very careful with longs. If you start to give like a failed break breakout and you take back the feds, the feds move, because that could be the start of a little bit of a profit taking pullback, not necessarily a fundamental pullback, but a profit taking pullback that would take you back to like 508.50. So I just want to be cautious of that. That's why I'm saying only if the markets do not do that, would I then be also looking for um, what I've been looking for Coinbase. We've got this head and shoulders pattern on Bitcoin that I've been looking at pretty closely. And I also think that Reddit is, is going to set up for us for a trade down there off of 45, right? So this 45 level here on Reddit. Um, I gave you guys the, the 5150 level yesterday on the live stream. I told you guys that you've got resistance right there at 5150. We ran right up to 5150 um, today, topped out, rolled it back down to 46. Watch for that double bottom 45. 45, um, that double bottom at 45, watch for that level to possibly break. And if that level breaks, you could be looking at, um, yeah, you can be looking at a multi, a multi point move to the downside. I'm not really bullish on Reddit. Um, you know, I have concerns about Reddit. I'm, I have no intentions on putting it in my long-term portfolio. Uh, I'll trade it. You know, it's a great stock to trade, but I have no intentions on putting it in a long-term portfolio. My concern here is that you know, this company has been around, I think like now almost 20 years and has never been able to turn a profit. And the, the opportunity here for them to make money is really licensing opportunities for all of the data that they have. They have like 73 million active users or something like that. So they can really have, you know, license out some of their data. Um, but the issue that I have is that such the, 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 the user base um, on Reddit is so anti make money that I just don't know how they're going to be able to really monetize this without pissing off their user base. Like there was a whole issue. I don't know if you guys even know this or not, but like back in like 2015, there was like this revolt from like the Reddit users. Like they like revolted against the company and it was this whole big thing. Um, and like, you know, uh, you saw a woman was on CNBC today and she was a moderator and she literally was talking about how she would complain as a moderator to the company. Like, these are the things that we need as moderators. These are the tools that we need. But then in the same breath, she's like, yeah, you know, um, you know, like them going public and them IPOing and like rubbed us the wrong way. They're like making money from like, well, Okay, let, let, let's just walk this back. Let's take a couple steps back here. You want tools, you want resources in order for you to have a better experience as a moderator and better serve the community, but then you don't want the company to make any money. So then where do you think that the, the money comes from to actually make and build out those tools and to run this platform and to run this website? So there's a major disconnect there that people just think things are just free and and every every company is supposed to be a charity and no one is supposed to turn a profit and, and just capitalism is evil. So I don't know how that's going to play out if that is the, the mindset of your user base. So I have concerns there with Reddit that I really do feel like, mark my words, I don't know if it's next month, next year, two years, three years, there is going to be some type of drama between Reddit users and moderators and Reddit management. Now that they are a public company, there's going to be a lot of pressure for them to work towards profitability. And in order for that company to work towards profitability to appease their shareholders, they're going to have to make some changes. And those changes may not be welcomed by the moderators and the users. They may be inconvenienced. They may be annoyed by advertisements or something. I don't know. But I can absolutely see there being a beef between Reddit, the company and Reddit, the community. 
And that could be something that investors are not going to want to stick around and, and, and hang out with. I don't know. So that's why I'm cautious on this as a long-term portfolio investment. I, I have no intentions on putting it in my portfolio. Um, I'd much rather wait and see if they're able to actually become profitable and how they actually become profitable. What do they do differently? Um, is the community satisfied with their, their actions? I don't know. I'd much rather wait for all of those things to come to fruition and see how it goes before I even consider putting this stock in my long-term portfolio. I don't care if the stock goes to 100. I don't care if the stock goes to 10. I have no intentions on putting this in my portfolio. I'll trade it, but it's not going in the long-term portfolio. Okay, so those are my thoughts there. Um, but yeah, these are just a couple of ideas that I have kind of going into next week. Reddit, Microsoft, CrowdStrike are just a few of them. I got some ideas with crypto. We'll see what happens with crypto over the weekend. Some big levels down here, key support levels in the low 60s. Um, um, key support in the low 60s for Bitcoin. That level's got a hold. So I've got some ideas with that that we can talk about on Sunday at 8.30. So again, reminders, set your reminders, 8.30 p.m. Eastern live. All right, we'll go over top trade ideas for the week. And these trade ideas are something that you guys are going to want to listen to. You don't want to pay attention to these ideas that I give you guys because, um, I mean, they're, they're, they've been pretty damn good, <laughs> right? I give you guys, these are exactly the ideas that I have on what I think, you know, individual stocks are going to do. Um, and it literally my plan on how I plan on making money for the week. These are trades that I will be executing myself next week and stocks that I'm focused on. I'll give you entry and exit prices. And again, you're going to want to pay attention because the moderators and I collectively as a group have been able to maintain a cumulative win rate on all of our executions of just around 80% now going on roughly the last four years. So that's why you should want to pay attention to the trade ideas that we share with you. And really the real reason though, aside from, you know, a, a, a decent win rate is the success of our members is why you should want to pay attention to the stuff that we discuss. Our members, our members are making money and they're becoming better traders. And not just because I think that to be true, it's because they say it to be true. And I'll, I'll prove it to you. Members, do me a favor, just type the number one if you're making money and you're becoming better traders because of TTG, just type the number one. Uh, Vena Bahari, yes, all my lives, all the lives are recorded. All the live streams that I've done, uh, Vena, are all right here on this YouTube channel. You can go back and watch any single one of them. So just type the number one, folks, if you guys are making money and you're becoming better traders because of True Trading Group, just type the number one. Now, for those of you that are not members, just pay close attention to how many people you see type one. And these are your, your family members and your coworkers. And if they can make money, there's absolutely no reason why that you can't either. It's not because it's not because they're luckier than you. It's not because they have more experience than you. It's certainly not because they have more time than you. 82% of our members have full-time jobs. They work over 40 hours a week, 82% of them. They use our mobile app, which you can all have access to. Okay, our mobile app is available on iPhone and Android. You can see the screen share, listen to the audio commentary, and get real-time push notifications when our mods enter and exit their positions. And that's how so many of our members that have full-time jobs that cannot be in front of a computer all day, every day. That's how they're able to follow along and benefit from what is True Trading Group. How many people do we have on here right now on the stream that are not members of True Trading Group? Do you have anybody on here that's not a member? Type the letters TTG if you are not a member. <laughs> oh, money flow goes. I still don't know what I'm doing, but I'm but I'm making money still. It's crazy. <laughs> that's incredible. Phil Mai says, thanks very much, Michael, for your insightful guidance. It is my absolute pleasure. TG has plenty of great lessons and videos to review and learn from. Thanks, Ed. We got James, uh, Venna, are some non-members that are with us here today. James Bolignini. I like the last name. I Green Comp. Welcome. So we got a handful of non-members that are with us here today. Guys, I'll just tell you real quick. We're gonna, here's what we're going to do today on the live stream. We're going to do a segment called Grade My Stock. Members love this. Grade My Stock is a segment where... You know, hey, listen, we're wrapping up the week. I'll, you guys can call out some ticker symbols. I'll take a look at them and I'll grade them. I'll give them a grade A, B, C, D, F. Okay. A meaning love it. I buy. B meaning I like it. I, I, I hold it. C is eh. D is I would sell it. F is don't even talk to me about this stock ever again. <laughs> it's like that. That is kind of how I go through and I do, I give my grades and I will give you, 
my reasons behind those grades. I don't want you just to think that just because I give it this grade means that that's, you know, gospel or whatever it is. I want you to understand why I feel that particular way about a stock. It could be a technical reason. It could be a fundamental reason. Um, it could be a handful of different things. Um, but I will go through, I'll give you guys grades on those stocks and I'll uh, give you my reasons for it. All right. These are all my opinions and you guys can take that information and do with it, whatever you, do, you guys do, please. But before I do that, I want to make sure that all the people that are not members, I do want to make sure that you guys are aware that we've got a 50% coupon code that I've given out on the YouTube channel. I want to make sure you guys are just aware of it in case you do want to join True Trading Group, you don't have to pay the full price. So the normal, the normal price is $1,212 for the year. However, when you use the coupon code TTG, one, two, one, you can actually get 50% off. It drops the price to 597 for the whole year. So you can go to ttgoffer.com. That's ttgoffer.com. You will then enter the coupon code. You have to manually type it in. TTG one, two, one, click apply code. The price drops to 597. Now, what does that get you? The 597 gets you access to our chat room, obviously. All of the real-time trade alerts, the mobile app, the watch list from the moderators every day with detailed entry and exit points on the stocks that we're focused on. All of the courses, which are a simplified and expanded upon version of the training I received when I worked at the firm in New York. You guys get access to beginner courses, advanced courses, options, swing trading, trader psychology, crypto. You get access to all those courses. There's no upsell for those courses. They are included when you join for the 597. You got a video library that has over like a thousand hours, nearly, I think nearly a thousand hours of workshops covering different topics that the moderators and I have hosted live. And then we record those sessions. We put them up into the video library for you to go back and watch them whenever you guys wish. You'll have access to all of that for $5.97 for the whole year. Now, when you join True Trading Group, you see, we stand behind the platform that we've created. I believe very strongly in the platform's ability to help you guys actually reach your goals and to give you a real chance of becoming successful. And that's really all you can ask for. I can't guarantee you success. I wish that I could. But all you can ask for is a real, legitimate, true, fair chance of you guys becoming successful. And I believe strongly in our platform's ability to achieve exactly that, so much so that we offer a double your money back guarantee when you join. This is how it works. Our W money back guarantee is right there on the checkout page. It's in black and white. Go read it. This is how it works. You join True Training Group now, you pay $5.97. Go through our courses, pass our quizzes, and attend one study group. We use study groups every Thursday. They don't cost any extra money. They're included. Attend one. If you do those things, and you can take your time, go at your own pace. You have the whole year to do these things. If you do them and are unable to make enough winning trades to equal the $597 membership fee, we will give you back $1,194. So you'll have all year, if you can't make if you can make enough winning trades to equal the 597 at least one time, if you can't do that, we'll give you back $1,194. Again, the refund uh, policy is right there on the checkout page. Go read it, it's real, it's right there, okay? So that's ttgoffer.com, enter the coupon code TTG121, click apply code, price drops at 597. You have the W money back guarantee that I frankly don't think that you need, but it gives you peace of mind, holds us accountable. Our refund rate at TTG is actually less than two and a half percent. And we have a retention rate of 78%, meaning 78% of our members have either renewed their annual membership or they've upgraded to actually become lifetime members of the community. Okay, so because... Of those numbers, we're nearly five-star rated on Trustpilot with well over 2,500 reviews. That's why I have no problem offering double your money back for anyone that does join the TTG family. So again, just TTG121 coupon code if you guys have any questions, okay? If you guys have any questions, you text us, 1-888-306-8783. Again, that's 1-888-306-8783. Text us with any questions that you guys have. Um, does it include trading view premium, not the 597 price point? Okay. So repetitive HN does not include trading view premium. Now, when you join the 597 price point does not, but after you join for the 597, if you want to unlock all of our other tools, because we have available on the platform, we have Benzinga pros newsfeed trading view premium, trading view, uh, premium charting software. You have the trade idea scanner. 
You have unusual options activity, options flow, dark pool data, um, short data, analyst ratings, a trading journal, a social sentiment scanner, AI trading tools. All of those things are available on our platform. They are just not included for the 597 price point. Those are just, if you want those tools, a few hundred bucks more, and you guys can get access to all those tools. That's an amazing deal because those tools alone, if you paid for them on your on your own, they're going to cost you thousands of dollars a year. So like uh, Repetit HN, you know that like trading view premium is like 600 bucks a year, something like that, right? So you'll get trading view premium and all those other things I just said for just a few hundred bucks additional from the 597 that you're paying to join the annual membership. Okay, so we have that stuff available if you want it, but it's not included in the 597 price point. I want to be fully transparent. I don't want you guys, you know, no, no misunderstandings or no surprises. The 597 gets you all of our courses. It gets you the entire video library. It gets you the chat room, the live trade alerts, the mobile app. Okay, the watch list from the moderators and two... Um, small private mentor study group sessions. Okay. That is what the 597 is going to get you for the whole year. If you want those other tools, let us know. We can give them to you, but for an additional cost. All right. Mad Hobby. We got to welcome Mad Hobby. Welcome to the TTG family. Everybody welcome Mad Hobby, newest member of the group. Everybody welcome Mad Hobby. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Newest member of the group. Uh, no, repetitive, not at checkout. Um, repeated, not at checkout. You can't add them at checkout, but after you join, if you want them, you can just let us know. Um, we haven't set up like the one click for you to just do it on your own. Okay. We haven't had you set it up just that one click to do it on your own yet. All right. But you can just let us know and we'll go over with you repeated. We'll go over all the things that are included. You know what repeated, honestly, if you want to do it now, repeated, just text us. Honestly, repetitive. If, if you're if you if you're interested, just text us right now, and I can have I can have um, one of our reps just explain to you what it would be if you're interested. Yeah, that's the easiest thing probably to do. So just and this goes for anybody else that's interested too. One eight 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 three zero six eight seven eight three, and and repetitive. Our rep will tell you everything that would be included and how much extra it would be. And if you want it, we can get you signed up right there through the text. Okay, so one eight eight eight. 306-8783. Again, repeated that phone number is right down there at the bottom of the screen. It sounds like you probably pay for some of this stuff already. Like if you already pay for TradingView Premium, if you already pay for Benzinga Pro, like that stuff is all available and you can get all of that and the membership with your trading group for like a thousand bucks for the whole year. So just send us a text message. Um, if you're interested in that and we can get you hooked up and taken care of it's, it's so our, us having all those tools available on our platform is the reason why we were nominated and we're a finalist for best data analysis tool at last year's Benzinga FinTech awards. It's because of that. Oh, nice. That was kiddos. Kiddos. Nice. Excellent guys. So the, the Madabi, I'm sorry, I pronounced, I pronounced it incorrectly. So Madabi, that was kiddos. So kiddos, welcome to the family. I'm glad you did decide to join Kiddos, welcome, 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 welcome to the TGD team. And repetitive, like I said, send us a text message too. We'll answer those questions for you. We'll get you hooked up. And anybody else, you can text us 1 306 8783. All right. Beautiful. All right, folks. Next up, grade my stock. Grade my stock. On this segment of grade my stock, you guys call out ticker symbols. I grade them. Go for it. Do your worst. James Bolognini goes, A-U-R. Talk to me. Talk to me, A-U-R. Um, this is a D. A-U-R is a D for me, James. I am sorry, brother, but it is a D for me. Um, it's just to, listen, I, I don't really, what you'll, what you'll know, you'll notice about me is that I do not own, um, I do not own like these really cheap, small, tiny, like penny stock companies. Okay. Um, they're not good quality companies. 
So a lot of people sometimes feel like, well, because the stock is so cheap, okay, because the stock is so cheap, they people sometimes will think, oh, well, I'll buy this because, you know, the stock can easily go to four or five dollars, right? Um, but it can just as easily go to one dollar. You know, just because a stock is a hundred dollars a share doesn't mean it can't go to two hundred. At the end of the day, the percentage gain is the percentage gain. Whether you buy a hundred shares of a one dollar stock or one share of a hundred dollar stock, it's still a hundred dollar investment. And if the stock doubles, you made a hundred bucks, right? It's it's all relevant. And if I'm not mistaken, James, don't quote me on this, but if I'm not mistaken, I believe AUR filed a $500 million S3, which means they're probably going to be raising money soon, which would dilute the stock. I would not be the least bit surprised if within the next couple of weeks to a couple of months, this stock is trading at around a hundred, I mean, it's a hundred, that this stock is trading around a buck 50, a buck 60, something like that. Um, but a $500 million S3 filing, that means they might be raising money soon. You have, you know, you've got major resistance here at 275, which is all three of your major moving averages. I just think that it's more likely, James, that the stock does this than it is the stock does this. Now, granted, obviously, if there's some random piece of news that causes the stock to gap up. You'd be like, ha ha, I'm like, you're an idiot. You don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what kind of news the company, I mean, listen, if, if you're asking me about this company because you think they got some kind of news coming and you've been following the company fundamentally, that's one thing. This is not a company that I follow. It's not a company that I've considered, um, not a company that I've considered um, buying. It's not a stock that I've actually considered trading. Um, but any piece of news could gap the stock up 50%, 80%. You've seen that happen before with these small caps. But I just think it's more likely that this thing goes under $2 than it does go to 3 or 4 That's just my, my honest opinion on it. AMD says, Smoke Devine. Uh, AMD for me is in A. AMD for me is an A. I own AMD. Um, I own AMD. I love AMD. I'm going to buy me some Mo AMD. That's right. So AMD is um, one of my largest holdings in my set for my semiconductors. My largest semiconductor holding is NVIDIA by far. Um, and then my second and third largest uh, semiconductor holdings are Broadcom and AMD. So you have NVIDIA is my largest. You have Broadcom um, is also up there. And AMD is also up there. Uh, I got. I think Broadcom might be bigger at this point than AMD. I'd have to open back up and, and check the capital allocation on that. But NVIDIA I know is the largest. But nonetheless, AMD and Broadcom are my, are my two and three. Um, I like AMD. I actually feel like AMD is a little baby NVIDIA. Um, they're, they're behind NVIDIA. Um, but I do think that this company is, um, I do think that this company is going to become one of the most important and one of the most dominant semiconductor companies in the space. I absolutely love Lisa Sue, the CEO. I think she is absolutely brilliant and has done a phenomenal job with this company. I will never forget the video clip that I saw. I didn't actually see it live, but the video clip I saw of Lisa Sue when she was first on CNBC as the CEO of AMD, the stock was around four or $5 a share. And she told Jim Cramer right to his face, everybody should buy this stock. And now at $180, recently hitting 230, 220, everybody should have bought the stock, <laughs> right? Um, but I think that we've recently had this great clear out, this great breakout at 160. I think if you don't own AMD at all and you were looking for places to get engaged, I would say the 160s is a spot to buy. 
And then I would say like the 140s and 130s. I think these two spots right here are great places to be taking taking stabs at, at AMD. I love the support levels that are down here. You have previous all-time high, right? We broke above it and then it became support. Now you drop back into it. We look for that to become support. If this level breaks, you have another beautiful support level right here. There's support. There's resistance. There's resistance. And that's another beautiful buy zone. So for me, these are buy zones. Okay. So AMD for me is going to be an A. It's a long-term hold. Um, and I'm actually getting an update here that AUR actually has an S3 filing from December for $850 million. All right. So that's what I said. I could, don't quote me on that before, but one of our guys just took a look. S3 filing on AUR from December for $850 million. Um, okay. So yeah, AMD for me, guys, it is an A. It will be a permanent, it will have a permanent place in my long-term portfolio. And I very selfishly want the stock to go down just so we can continue to buy more over time. Next up, next ticker for grade my stock. Costco. Oh man, what a monster. Costco, what a monster. Oh, Costco. I'm going to give Costco like a BB plus. And the reason why I'm going to give it a BB plus is just because I wouldn't buy it right now, but I would buy it in like the low 600s. So I like this level right here on Costco. You had, this is a weekly chart, right? I'll go to a daily chart just to make it easier, easier on you. Prior all-time high, right? Prior all-time high, double top all-time high. Then you had we hit that had that high again. Then you gapped above it and rallied, right? You never, you never went back to test that level. Ever. Never went back to test the level. I don't really feel comfortable buying it up here, but I'll tell you what, in this region, all day long. All day long at that region. So I would say that's going to be a B for me. All right. So Costco will be a B for me. Now in this um in this um, sector, my biggest position on like that, the discount, the discount stores, my biggest position is Walmart. Okay. My biggest position is Walmart, um, in that discount, um, store, but arena. So I'm going to give Costco a B and that's the zone that I would like for that long-term, uh, portfolio snag. What about Mara? Mara for me is a D. Um, Mara for me is not investable. It's just tradable. So I don't like any crypto, I don't like any Bitcoin miners as long-term investments. Um, that's just me personally. I'll trade them, but I would have no intention on really ever owning them. And the way that I look at it is, as Bitcoin continues to be mined and Bitcoin continues to have the Bitcoin miners are going to be collecting less and less Bitcoin. The cost for that mining is not necessarily coming down. So you're still going to have very high costs, but you're going to be getting rewarded with much less Bitcoin. Now, the way to offset that is for the companies to either bring their costs down, which are going to be damn near impossible, or the price of Bitcoin has to double which I think the price of Bitcoin could double. I think it will double actually from here over time. Um, but the way that the Bitcoin algorithm actually works is that the closer you get to that last Bitcoin being mined, the harder and harder and harder that it becomes. So the harder that it becomes mean, and then it continues to, and then the halvings, the miners are going to get less and less. Unless I listen, I don't consider myself a crypto expert by any means. I don't, I don't pretend to be a crypto expert, but that doesn't make sense to me for a company that I'm going to want to invest in for the long term. I would much rather own MicroStrategy, Coinbase, or just Bitcoin itself than a Bitcoin miner. Kava, Kava for me, guys. I gotta tell you, man. Kava for me is like a B plus, A minus. I really like Kava. 
Um, I think Cobb is a buy back in the high 50s. Um, there's there's two places that I like Kava for buys. One is here, and then another is down here. And I'm going to tell you why I like Kava, because I've been to them. Now, many of you may have never heard of Kava. You may have never eaten out of Kava. But essentially what Kava is, is Chipotle for Mediterranean food. The exact same, you walk into a Kava, you would think you're walked into a Chipotle. The exact same setup, the exact same process, similar price points. It's just Mediterranean, like Greek, it's like Mediterranean food. The food is delicious. There's like healthier options. It's fantastic. Every time I've get I've been to a Kava, the line is to the door. Every time. Now, they're a small chain. I, I, I really only think they're on like the East Coast. I don't know if there's any on the West Coast yet. I don't think that there are. But I think this chain has the potential to become as big as like Shake Shack. Shake Shack recently blew up over the last few years. Okay. And I think Kava has the potential to become like a Shake Shack. Or like a Chipotle. Now, I don't want to say Chipotle because Chipotle is just next level. But it's the exact same. They literally took a proven business model that Chipotle has proven out. And they just changed the food. So I like this. I like it for the long-term hold. I like it for the long-term portfolio. I love the food. And judging by... You know, the foot traffic, whenever I go to one, they're always packed. So obviously I'm not the only one that, that likes these, that likes the food, um, reasonably priced. And I just, I feel like it's a, it's a company that could do very, very well. Um, I feel like it's a company that could do very, very well over, you know, the next several years. The one thing that I will say is that they're, the stock is pretty expensive as far as their earnings and expected, like it's trading at a pretty high premium to their expected earnings. So I would not say the stock is cheap right now. Um, it is kind of on the expensive side and there is a premium on this equity right now. Um, but I also think that goes to show you how excited people are about the brand. And, you know, there's, there's certain stocks that just because a stock is trading at a high premium or high multiple doesn't mean that it's, it's a, it's, it's too expensive to buy. You've had stocks like Tesla, Amazon have traded at, you know, very high multiples and, and PE ratios for years and the stocks kept going higher. Right. So you know, I just think that it's a little expensive right now, but keep an eye on it for pullbacks. It's got, it's a brand that I personally like, and I think it has a lot of potential. All right. All right, folks, we'll do one more. We'll do one more grade my stock and then we'll break for the weekend. I A U A A Under Armour. Oh my goodness, I haven't looked at this thing in forever. Um, Under Armour's a D for me, Pablo. Under Armour's a D. Um, I'm concerned. Listen, if Nike and Lululemon have issues, then there's no possible way that I would assume that Under Armour is not. Under Armour is nowhere near the brand of Lululemon or Nike. And if Under Armour, I mean, excuse me, if Lululemon and Nike are worried about weak guidance going forward and they're worried about, um, you know, consumer spending habits, then I would have to guess that Under Armour is going to also have a problem. Um, people would be much more likely to pass up on the Under Armour hoodie and buy the Nike sneakers 
or, you know, uh, the Lululemon leggings, they would much rather spend the hundred bucks on, on a Nike hoodie than, you know, 70 bucks on an Under Armour hoodie, a hundred bucks on some Lululemon leggings versus, you know, 65 bucks for Under Armour sweatpants. I just think that it's nowhere near the brand um, that Nike and Lululemon are as far as consu- customer loyalty. There are certain brands that that have built such incredible loyalty from their consumers that consumers will stretch from their budget to purchase their product. Under Armour, in my opinion, does not have that relationship with its consumer. Nike has that relationship with its consumer. Nike kids will, you know, people will save up for an entire month to buy a new pair of Nikes, right? You know, people will, you know, a girl will go and spend $120 on some Lululemon leggings when, you know, knowing that she really shouldn't, but she really wants the Lululemon leggings because it's Lululemon, right? It's my niece. My niece is, you know, they're going to be 13 years old and and all she cares about is Lululemon, Lululemon, Lululemon. Every, every time that I, hey, what do you want for your birthday? Lululemon, Lululemon. It's like, you're 13. <laughs> like, why, why does it have to be Lululemon? You're not, you're 12, <laughs> right? But that just goes to show you like, what that brand image has the, the the image of the brand on the consumer. Right. And I think Under Armour just does not have that. So if you're concerned about the consumer going forward and Nike and Lululemon seem to be considering they had weaker guidance for the next quarter, then I can't imagine things are going to go well for Under Armour. If Nike and Lululemon are correct about consumer slowing down, I can't imagine Under Armour is going to be oblivious to that slowdown. Okay. So that's it, folks. That wraps it up there for me. That finishes up the segment of Grade My Stock. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know you guys really love doing the Grade My Stock segment. It's a lot of fun. Um, I know you guys enjoy it. And I enjoy it too, honestly. It's a lot of fun. I really like you know, giving you kind of the bigger picture view and my reasonings why I like or dislike a particular... Oh, the, the Ruben story. <laughs> There's not enough. I'll tell the Ruben story, Pablo. I'll tell the Ruben story on a on another stream when there's more people. There's not that many. It's Friday afternoon. We didn't really, you know, promote the stream. It's there's not a lot of people on. I'll tell the story another time when there's a lot more people on. I promise. Right. I, I promise. <laughs> there's not a lot of people on on right now, but I, I will. Uh, and most of them have heard it already. But I'll tell it another time when there's more people on. Um, so I hope you guys all have a wonderful weekend. Remember, set your reminders Sunday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern. We're going to go live. I'll give you guys my top trade ideas for the week. Um, if you have not yet done so, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, turn on your notifications. Make sure you guys go to ttgoffer.com. Use the coupon code TTG121. Click apply code. The price drops all the way down to the $5.97. Check out. You're good to go. You guys got it for the whole year. You got the W money back guarantee that I really don't think you need, but it's there for peace of mind. Text us with any questions, 1-888-306-8783. Thanks for tuning in tonight, folks. I'll see you guys.